that's your actual differential in there which lets one half shaft turn independently from the other okay so if you imagine a car that's that wide yeah when it goes around a corner your outside wheel has to be turning faster than your inside yeah. wheel yeah so that's what allows it to do that Pinion gear. Sorry, pinion gear. Goes in the front of your differential there. That's your actual differential in there. Which lets one half shaft turn independently from the other. Okay. So if you imagine a car that's that wide, yeah. when it goes around a corner, your outside wheel has to be turning faster than your inside yeah. wheel. Yeah? So that's what allows it to do that. See they turn independently of each other. You can get locked diffs, you can get limited slip diffs, you can get all sorts of things, but that's just a bog standard. This isn't the right one for the axle. Um, well, the axle's different from the actual, what year it is, I've no idea. It's definitely early, but it isn't the 1929 one out of it. So you can get anything made, but you won't get bits for this. So we're gonna have to go with what we've got, you know? That's your pinion gear. Yeah, 1047. So that's probably 10 pinion gear, 47 crown wheel. And that will give you, if you divide them into each other, I think it gives you your ratio. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, 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 45, 46, 47. Just about make it out there, can't you? 10, 47. This is a shitty, horrible thing called a bearing greaser. How does that work then? Basically, you've got a grease gun you put on the end of there. Grease goes down there into that hole. You put your bearing on there like that, and it forces the grease into the bearing. That works. Yeah, see it's starting to come out the edges. Look, when I press the grease gun. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so you know your bearing's packed. Lovely. Well, <laughs> it's got grease in it now. Oh yeah. That's the proper way to pack them. Obviously that's got nowhere near as much as that in it, but it runs in oil anyway. Yeah. So as long as it's got some lube in it, then you throw this cloth away. <laughs> every time you pick it up, you get covered in grease. So we've got our bottom bearing in, got to put our spacer in, okay, that goes on there. Right, we're going to press that on, I'll give that a quick clean. That's our pinion set up nicely, there's no play in it, whereas before, can you remember we could move that about miles, I showed you. So that all needs to come apart, but by the looks of it, see all this lot here, that shims, so you must be able to pack your pinion backwards and forwards and then set your ring gear and basically just set it, take the half shafts out, I'll take the axle right out take the half shafts out and then strip the diff out and see what we can get. 
So you can't really set up a pinion tension on that because it's not how it works on one of these. Normally they only have one big ball bearing race in here. Okay. And you tighten it all up against it and that tensions your pinion, but because this is a two on a sliding cartridge, you've got to mesh that gear to that gear on there, yeah? And you want them so that they're basically aligning on the end here. There's a little, see that hammer mark there? One, two. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That tells you which side the caps have come off of. So there's a responding mark on this piece. So you know you're getting them on the right way. Okay. weld this all these rivets were loose we haven't got anything here that will press them hard enough to tighten them up so I split it in divided it into four equally and welded it it, can, it will never fall off do you know what I mean mm. it, it just needs locating because there was about 15 thousand backlash in it right so you don't want to do those up tight yet unless you want to get your sliders in your tighteners in they screw in the ends of those, look. I'm gonna make sure they're started okay. You don't want to cross thread these, you're gonna well as shit. Right, so you've got adjustment there. You can slide your pinion in and out, yeah? On spacers. Yeah. And you can drop that out of there. And then you can move your diff crown well that way to mesh with the pinion gear. Okay. But what you want to do is get this set in as a rough guideline to start. All right, you've got a lock bolt that goes in there to hold these with a tang washer, and they put the long bolts, the bolts are too long, look. So it's mashed all that thread up, so I have to file all those up. Oh. All right, so let's get a nipple on that. Coming a bit closer now. So. so you just want to get that even? No, just at the moment, all I want to do is get it so it's got slack in it. You have to set what they call a backlash on them. Hear that? Mm. That's backlash. It has to have that, otherwise, it will just chill all the gears to shit. So first thing I want to check, so your pinion gear, can you see that there, that bit? Yeah. You can force that in there where it should be, and it's just proud of the crown gear, yeah? So we can't have that, it needs to be further back, because what that will do is it will lead on the nose and it will snap teeth off like that. Like I say, I can't get any of these bits, and you know, ideally that needs a new crown wheel and pinion but you can't get them so we've got to set it up the best we can you know so we've got our shims here we'll measure those up 15 thou that's 15 thou that's 15 thou 25 30 5 39 thou so that should be the same yeah, they're the same. So we know we don't want to come back. It's got to be more than 15 hour looking at that. So what I'll do is put this in. So that gives us a, a nominal start, you know. And then your backlash will be a lot bigger than it was because you've come that way with yeah. the pinion gear. What I might, I'll have a look at it and see what it is. I might put a 15 in there. And that will give us, because what you need is two gaskets, one either side of that. So if we put a 15 in there, we'll do that other one. There is. That'll give us two two gasket paper thicknesses, basically. Yeah. Might be better off just putting the two 15s in actually. But so these actors gaskets, or are they? No, 
No, you'll have to put a gasket in there. In, in effect, it will have three gaskets. I mean, they say, it, I don't know, I would put three in there though. One either side of the spacers and one on the front nose. You have to nip all these up tight every time. See, it's pretty much in line with the end of the pinion gear now. I'm not hearing any scrunching. So now we shall adjust our backlash. This is a bit of a faff about because you have to nip those so you can just turn these then you have to set it then you have to tighten these up properly then you check it again because it would have moved Let's see if that will move just about which is what you want okay now i need a dial gauge what's the dial gauge used for that noise i need to know how many thousandths of an inch that's moving okay you want I haven't got any settings for this, but like a, all the big old stuff is normally no more than 10, no less than 6, so you want it about 8,000, something like that. And how does this gauge work? It's called a DTI, a dial test indicator, so you set that at zero. You put back back load on it, and then whenever you press that, look, that's thousandths of an inch. Okay. Right, so we want to put back load on it, yeah? Dial that round to zero. Okay, then we need to... So we've got 15 thou there, that's too much. Okay. Okay, did you see the needle moving? Yeah, yeah. So that's gone 10, 15 thou. That's too much, we need to get that down. So what you do is you bring your crown wheel further into the pinion gear so you tighten that one up and loosen that one off okay yeah all right from 20 south so We've got 13 sound now. We want to get down to about 8. That's 10 sound. Well, it's just over 8, so that's fine. As long as it's between 6 and 10, basically. Yeah. So that's good. Now what you've got to do is tighten these up properly. And then see what you got. Okay, because that could change it. Yeah. So then what you do is you work it out bit by bit and just back it back off. If you've gone from eight thou like that to zero, yeah. Yeah. Then you probably want to go sixteen thou and then tighten it and then it'll bring it back to eight. Okay. Does that makes sense. Kind of. Yeah. always listen to the torque wrench because you're used to doing things up with spanners that are that long yeah when you're hanging on a fucking foot and a half bar you think it isn't tight it is tight mm. you've got to be careful with them right let's check and see what we've got it's about eight and a half foul that's fine sweet that's fine what are you looking for? Just listening to it. That's got that, that much play in that, whereas before that was moving about two inches. Smudge a bit of that in there. All right, so what you want to do, you see your grease in there? Yep. So roll it round. You want to drive it by the pinion gear, actually. Okay, rock it through there. Here we greased up those two, so you just roll it through it, yeah? Yeah. And when you bring it back, right, we know we've got grease contact, yeah? 
from the bottom to the top because okay. it's squished all the grease out you yeah. see so that means it's using all of the pinion gear as opposed to being on the nose or the heel okay so the, the, it's meshing correctly if you know what i mean but if as long as you stick to standard settings sort of and get that backlash right it should be okay yeah it's like an even contact throughout yes yeah that's it exactly yeah so these are your lock tabs it'll go in there and stop those moving yeah and those bolts need a washer on them because they were too long Right, he's sitting nice, see that's right angles there? Yeah. What they've done is they tried to get that in there like that and bent it. So what we'll do is you you can tighten these quite a lot, so I'll just give that a nip because you know it can't go any further that way because this one's set. Yeah. So you just put a bit of tension on the bearing, bring that round in line, and then you know you're happy. If I can move it now it's locked up that is. Yeah, very slightly, so All sounds okay. Just get that bashed in. I'll do. Give them a nip down. And we've got a wire lock it all up. You're checking that for backlash here. Yeah? Always put pressure on it that way. Okay. Yeah? So that's the way it'd be rotating because your wheels go that way. And you can because if you just turn it you hear it notching yeah. if you hold it and you can't hear it you know your teeth are meshing nicely you can't a lot of people go too tight on diffs you, you know they unless they're really 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 knackered then you'll get more than enough adjustment for it not to be noisy you know you don't want to go mad tight with them so is that where knocking can, knocking can come from then knocking whirring Graunching, clonking, they make all sorts of weird noises when they're knackered. But this, that would have blown up if you'd have driven it like that. Mm. It would have killed itself because there was literally, well, there was a quarter of an inch play on that yeah. and about two inches on that, literally. Yeah. So I, I don't know whether it had all been wire locked up. So unless somebody really, really didn't know what they were doing or just gave up and just put it all back together, I don't know. <laughs> so how tight should you be going on this thing it does not tight it's literally an anti-rattle so if that does shake loose it just can't go any further okay Right. All good. Next week on the workshop. Right. Hear that clicking noise down here? Yeah. That means the throttle stop screw is hitting the carburetor, so you know you're on that, you're not relying on the cable for an idol.